Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Elkanen, along with Brianna Valeski, and we have two guests on the line, both from Alexander Alternative Capital. We have Michael Corselli. He is a chief investment officer, and Ted Isaac. He's head of research. Michael, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well, Joel. How about yourself? Good. And Ted, head of research, uh, thanks for joining us as well. You're welcome. It's great to be on. Uh, Michael, first off, just talk a little bit about your firm, Alexander Alternative Capital, a uh, global macro hedge fund that was ranked in the 96th percentile of 90, 973 head, hedge funds. Uh, how did you rack up such a good performance? Um, well, that's actually being very uh, opportunistic in the way that we deploy capital. Um, we're macro top-down to identify the uh, the trends and then long short equity in our expression we also buy and sell options as well okay take uh, take advantage of all those options that I'm buying selling the premium uh, let's uh, let's move on to the energy sector uh, big focus on the crude oil market this year uh, really fell off a cliff uh, got down to forty five dollars in the in the uh, in the contract the front month contract a uh, lot of people calling for the commercials to flush out there and send us down to the 30s or even 20s but we've staged a recovery now and now we're kind of pausing uh, were you able to take uh, take advantage of both sides of the market uh, on the down move and also on the recent rally um, our our view in the crude oil markets is uh, we like to be uh, directionless uh, with regards to the underlying commodity. Uh, however, our, our view is also built around the, the belief that oil is heading uh, lower uh, going forward. Um, we have a target price for crude at $33 a contract. Um, so okay. to answer your question, we, we did take advantage of um, – the bounce, but we took advantage of it more from being a toll booth rather than uh, taking directional risk on uh, the underlying commodity. Okay, and Ted, being a head of research, you probably have something to do with that 33 price target. Uh, can you tell us, you know, some of the components that you're using to come up with that price target? Well, I think I think fundamentally, the the reason we have a lower price target also factors in valuation a little bit. I mean, even if even if you were to argue that that oil prices are going to go up, what's really going to happen to the equities in that case? Because it's hard to see oil prices going back up to eighty or ninety or a hundred dollars a barrel and sustaining and being sustained there. So, so if you're and then the reason I say that is simply the numbers we all know. You know the storage numbers and the production from the U.S. and and everything going on there and the global production and things like that and consumption. So if if oil prices go back up, then these oil companies are going to be able to continue, you know, they're going to be able to continue doing fracking and all the other, using all the other new technologies. In addition, they're coming up with better and less expensive ways to develop oil. So people think, oh, oil prices are low. All of this is going to be knocked out of the market. But, and, and that that is true partially, but, but it's also true that people keep creating better technology all the way around. So as that happens, cost structures will come down. So, so the first thing you need to think about is, well, even if oil prices were to go up, what's really going to happen, there's probably a upper limit, and it's probably not sustainable. So so people aren't going to necessarily want to get in there and invest for the long term. On the other hand, you still have this situation where all of the capital that's been spent over the last few years is just coming to fruition now, and production levels are still, you know, a lot of production is still coming on stream. A lot of these projects are not going to go away just because oil prices are lower. Perhaps the future capital will be cut, which we see being cut. But but you're still but 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 that's going to take a while for that to come come through. So so I think you know our view is just there's more downside here realistically, absent some global event. Than what about what about the so oil rig count really coming down? We got nearly half as many uh, rigs online. Do you think that they're going to make up for production and other capacities? Because you know if the, if the supply is coming down and demand re remains the same, uh, do you, what do you think about that? Is that gonna, could be a fly in the ointment? Well, eventually, 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 I can correct. You know that will help help correct things. I mean that's the cycle. But I, I just don't think it happens as quickly as people want it to happen. Okay, uh, um, going back to you, uh, Michael. You know, it's just, 
there's a lot of oil out there and a lot of people drilling for oil and getting oil and and sure you know it, it just it, it will cycles to occur but it takes longer than people think Okay. Uh, Michael, going back to you, uh, just touching on the technology sector, uh, we've had some earnings, but no one's paying attention to anyone's earnings more than Apple today. And they've come out, they've done everything right here. The stock got a bump in the pre-market, 136.20. Uh, coming back down here, were you looking, I mean, every, you know, increased buyback, increased dividend, beat on the bottom line, beat on the top line. Everything you would think that uh, would be great, and the stock's up a couple bucks. He's a little bit concerned here. No, not at all. Um, I heard your bet on the with the previous guest. Uh, yeah, I I believe that um, that Apple's going to two hundred a year, and um, there's a lot of reasons why I believe that. Um, if you look at the stock, I mean, it's at an all time high. Uh, you know, it's it's not far off of the 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 post earnings uh high yesterday of uh 135 136 uh apple is uh you know everybody has a, a lot of apple and that's really the only concern that i have is um it's really a proxy for the entire us economy the world economy at the size that it's at but uh that's the only headwind i see um you know, we did an interview uh, back in November 17th of 2014. Uh, you know, it's going to be the first, I said it's going to be the first company with a trillion dollar market capitalization, and I believe that will happen in 2015. Okay. Uh, also, uh, Twitter, uh, due to announce earnings uh, coming up. Uh, any thoughts on Twitter? You had that breakout over $50, kind of stalled a little bit, coming back down to that area. Here's a company that's uh, never missed on EPS. What are you looking for out of Twitter? So Twitter receives over uh, 85% of their revenue based off of mobile. Mobile, as everybody knows, is, is growing uh, significantly. Um, that's a 2015 story. It's going to overtake, uh, you know, desktop, uh, you know, as far as advertising uh, this year. Um, the, the speed um, I believe Twitter is, uh, you know, one of the best positioned uh, stocks to to take advantage of the switch to mobile. Um, you know, they're going to blow out expectations. Uh, very optimistic on on Twitter. I do want to get back to to Apple for sure. a second. Sure, go ahead. If, if, if you don't mind, there was just a, a portion in in Apple's um, the, in the call yesterday. Uh, Tim Cook started to talk about uh, healthcare and some of the research apps that that are are, are being used, um, you know, with the iPhone and potentially the Apple Watch. Um, they have an app called Research Kit. And it's to study like asthma, breast cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Parkinson's disease. And uh, in the first few weeks, they have over 60,000 iPhone users that have enrolled um, in this program. Um, the possibilities of being able to develop uh, treatments, uh, new drugs, uh, getting things into stage one, two, three uh, FDA clinical trials is just, uh, I believe, unprecedented. And things like this uh, allow Apple to start trading to uh, a higher multiple, um, you know, from where it's at today to, to, to trade into the high teens uh, is not um, outside of uh, the realm of possibilities as well. Okay. And, uh, uh, Ted, going to you, to your research on Apple, uh, are you looking, do you have any technical levels that traders should keep an eye on or what's your research focus on? No, I think I think um, I think Michael's pretty much summed up our views on on Apple, and I think our you know I think the real key here is breakthrough technology, disruptive technology, and um, they just keep Apple keeps coming up with new things. So this medical thing that Michael just talked about is something that you know, you can't really quantify that very well, but but fundamentally, my all my life experience as a research analyst tells me that that that's something that's going to really revolutionize the way people live, and, I, and I, maybe that sounds like a very bold statement, uh -huh. but I really believe that that's the case because they're, they're now expanding into things that are going to just be so fundamental to the way people live day to day that, that there's, there's going to be major changes from that, and we, we, we can't even envision them at this point. I don't even think Apple can really envision them at this point, but 
active with inform- information combined with people's desire to have better health, combined with medicine and everything else we have going, when that all comes together, then, you know, it comes down to a really personal thing where, where you know, it improves people's life. And so that so if you're the company that's kind of leading that and spearheading that, then then it's it's the place you should be invested. In terms of all the other fundamentals, earnings and you know, technical factors, I think those are pretty well known out there in the market. But so so that that's sort of the foundation of our research. Uh, okay, Ted, Ted um, Exxon Mobil Exxon Mobil and Chevron uh, they're uh, due to announce earnings here. Uh, you know, going with your thesis on, you know, the lower crude oil here. Uh, any thoughts? Exxon Mobil's been uh, running into some resistance above the eighty eight dollar level. Um, any any comments on that company? Well, on Exxon Mobil, my comment is that I've always always had the same view for many, many years I've had the view of Exxon that it's it's really just a buy and hold, well run play of all the companies I've ever been involved with in my career in energy. Um, they're the most disciplined in terms of their capital and their their financial management and their, their assets of course are really good. They definitely need to improve in some areas and you might see them taking advantage of the situation with acquisitions and things like that. But you know, it's not whether the price Current price is the right price or not? You know, it's, it's, I don't. I don't think Exxon's really a short-term play. I think people that want to invest in Exxon have to say this is a w- really well-run company. It's a top oil company. You're going to be a conservative investor that just wants to know your money is being well managed, and then over time you're going to benefit from it. Yeah, so yeah. That how nice... their earnings will turn out will be interesting. They're so well balanced. It's, you know how their earnings will turn out is difficult to know, but they're very integrated, as you know. So, Joel, we have a uh, an expectation of about eighty four cents versus consensus of eighty two, uh, mainly due to the uh, the downstream and upstream uh, crack spreads. So, uh, they should do a little bit better than expectations when they report earnings. Okay, uh, going back to the technology sector here, I just wanted to get your thoughts, uh, Michael, on Microsoft. Uh, bad quarter, good quarter. Uh, they took it down uh, back in January. Reversal of fortune here, back up at the forty-eight dollar level. How often do you see a big stock like uh, Mr. Softy, you know, move off four, five, six points? What's your outlook from here? Forty-eight to fifty, or you look for it to give a little bit back? Uh, Microsoft has um, this new platform, this cloud-based platform, which we actually use at, at our firm, um, this uh, Office 365, and uh, it's, you know, it's basically, uh, it's a little scary. They haven't worked out all the, the bugs. Um, you know, we've been frustrated with it in our own personal office, and, uh, you know, I'm not saying we're highly tech savvy uh, people, but I believe we're, we're better than most. Um, so it's going to be interesting to watch, you know, how these desktop installations move to the cloud. And, um, you know, Microsoft's got a lot of work to do. Uh, we're not, you know, buyers of Microsoft here. Perhaps it's a mistake um, that we're making. Um, but again, uh, you know, we feel like, you know, they're, they're in the middle of a transition and we just we don't have enough uh, clarity if they're going to be able to to accomplish their their goals long term. Um, you know, with Microsoft Office and uh, you know the Windows based platform. So uh, we're, we're taking a wait and hold on it. Uh, one of the things that we do have a lot of color on is Valero, okay. which reported earnings this morning. Ted, do you want to do a, a quick just rundown on on your, your thoughts on Valero's earnings and what we see going forward? I think Valero's earnings came in in uh, good. Um, they they uh, we we feel like they're performing pretty much as ex- as expected, or maybe a little bit better in our views than than what a lot of people thought. Um, their comp- the company has a lot of cash. If you look at their their dividends and their stock buybacks, then the yield is very attractive on the company. They're very well positioned um, in this market to to do well just the, where their assets are and the way they have their logistics set up and the fact they're able to take assets and put them down into the MLP, those are all positives. So I think, you know, in this time of uncertainty in the oil sector, the refining area in general is a good area to be looking at. And 
you know, because you don't have quite as much volatility with the crude. And, you know, Valero's one of the top companies there, so we're, we definitely are recommending it. Okay, back to you, Michael. Just overall market thoughts. We hit a new all-time high yesterday in the index. Uh, selling off a little bit today, you know, despite some uh, good numbers by Apple. Uh, any thoughts moving forward here uh, in the market? Yeah, we're, we're wildly optimistic with regards to equity markets. Um, we believe that they're going to continue to outperform. Um, we also see, uh, you know, some some increased volatility on the horizon uh, as people start to respond to a potential rate hike, uh, you know, in September. And, uh, you know, that'll work its way into all the different asset classes. So uh, you have to pick your points. You have to focus on, you know, not getting too greedy and also, you know, not pushing, not pushing your money in all at once. So, you know, going forward, we see this being a, you know, a, a great market, um, you know, with some turbulence and buy, buy the pullbacks. Just make sure that you're not buying them too early. Okay. Michael Corselli, Chief Investment Officer for Alexander Alternative Capital, along with their head of research, Ted Isaac, joining us here on Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Gentlemen, thanks a lot for the information. We hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks for having us, Joel. Okay. Thank you.